This video is about motion maps. Motion maps represent the position, velocity, and acceleration of an object at regular clock readings. For now, we're only going to include position and velocity. We will begin to include acceleration later in the year. Here we have a car. In a moment, it is going to move to the right across the screen at a constant speed. As it moves, we are going to record its position each second by placing a dot at the location of the front tire. So each of these dots represents the position of the car at some time as it moved across the screen and the amount of time between each dot is one second. To represent the velocity of the car, we are going to attach an arrow to each of those positions. As a convention, we'll make the length of these arrows equal to half of the space between the dots that represent the positions. Now let's take a look at the car and the corresponding motion map if the car were moving faster. We can see that because the car was moving more quickly, the dots that represent the position have more space between them. If we follow the same convention to draw the arrows that represent our velocities, we'll find that they are significantly longer, representing the greater velocity at which the car traveled. If, instead of traveling to the right, the car had been traveling to the left, our motion map would simply look like this. Motion maps can also be used to represent more complicated motion. Here, the car will move to the right at a constant velocity, stop for a few seconds, and then move to the left at a slower constant velocity. Because the position of the car didn't change for several seconds, we draw several dots at that location. So that they don't overlap, we can draw them adjacent to each other. Let us consider the interpretation of the motion map below, which represents the motion of two cyclists. Both cyclists begin moving to the right at time t equals zero seconds. Cyclist B begins at the origin, and cyclist A begins at some point to the right of the origin. Each cyclist travels at a constant speed, though cyclist B travels faster than cyclist A. At some time between t equals one second and t equals two seconds, Cyclist B overtakes or passes Cyclist A. A graphical representation of the behavior of cyclists A and B would look like this. Once again, we can see that both cyclists begin moving at t equals zero. We can see that cyclist A begins at some position to the right of the origin. We can see that each cyclist is traveling at a constant speed, although B is traveling faster. And we can see that between T equals one second and T equals two seconds, cyclist B passes cyclist A. We can also represent the behavior of the cyclists algebraically as follows. The displacement of cyclist A equals the velocity of cyclist A times time plus the initial displacement of cyclist A. The displacement of cyclist B equals the velocity of cyclist B times time. And in this case, we know that the velocity of cyclist B is greater than the velocity of cyclist A. Throughout this unit, we will be representing the motion of objects in multiple ways. Pictorially, with motion maps, graphically, and algebraically. 
Here are some hints for drawing your own motion maps. First, draw dots indicating the position of the object at equal time intervals, for instance, each second. Second, attach arrows to the dots indicating the direction of motion. Make the arrow length half of the space between the dots to make your motion map easy to read. When an object is stopped for several time intervals, draw multiple dots at the same position. And finally, make sure your sequence of arrows has a logical flow so that the motion is clearly communicated.